I'd like to talk today about fathers who give blessing. Although the role of the mother as nurturer is vital, without a father's approval and validation, children feel a void. Uh, many children today f uh, struggle from low self-esteem because they never receive their father's approval. Fathers, we have something to give our children no one else can give them. Other people can tell you, your children, how great they are, you are, they are but when the father tells them, uh, it carries a whole new weight. As a father, you have the God-given authority to bless your children. Every time you say to your children, you're great, you're amazing, I'm proud of you, you're propelling them toward their destiny. We all carry on busy lives. We can get sidetracked. Uh, we can get into an adversarial relationship with our kids where we're always telling them what they're doing wrong. Uh, you might think, they know I love them. They know I'm proud of them. No, you're the father. Don't withhold your affection or approval. Uh, you may not have received the blessing from your father. He wasn't around much, or when he was, he was just correcting you, telling you what you were doing wrong. Maybe he didn't show you your value and affection. Don't let that negative cycle be passed on to the next generation. You can set a new standard. Give your kids the blessing. Make sure they know you're their number one fan. Call out their seeds of greatness. You know how many people would love to have children? They spend lots of money on infertility tests, all kinds of procedures, and maybe they try adoption. Your children are a, chi a prized possession. God is counting on you as a father to give them blessing. Your affirmation and approval carries more weight than any other man's. Without your affirmation, your children will struggle in areas they don't need to. Insecurity, anger, promiscuity, addiction. Charles Colson, who worked uh, for years with inmates in prisons, cites all kinds of studies that show boys who grow up without fathers are at least twice as likely as other boys to end up in prison. 60% of rapists and 72% of adolescent murderers never knew or lived with their fathers. Even in the toughest inner city neighborhoods, just 10% of kids from intact families get into trouble, but 90% of those from broken families do. Girls raised without a father in the home are five times more likely to become mothers while still adolescents. Uh, the root cause is a lack of affirmation. Sometimes we're taught we're men. We don't hug. We don't show affection. We don't do mushy talk. That's weakness. Actually, it's just the opposite. Real men hug. Real men show affection. Real men give their approval. All children are born with a need for their father's approval. On the playground, watch me, Daddy. See how fast I am? See how strong I am? We long for Dad to say, you're fast. You're strong. You're amazing. You can have a neighbor watch you a nanny, a babysitter, but when it's dad's who's watching, it takes on a much bigger dimension. Your children could be 40 or 50, and deep down they're still saying, Daddy, look how well I'm doing. Fathers, here's the good news. It's never too late to give your blessing. I wonder what would happen if you picked up the phone or you asked your son or daughter out for dinner or lunch, and said, I'm so proud of you, it could be a turning point. So how can fathers give blessing? I'm talking to fathers today because it's Father's Day, but I want you to know, moms, you can give a blessing. Teachers, you can bless your children, your, te uh, your students. Employers can bless their employees. Siblings, you can bless your brothers and sisters. All of you can bless your friends. So this message is for everybody here today. You may have missed it, but there are a lot of blessings in the Bible. 
There's a lot of emphasis in the Bible on blessing. So let's look at them. As we look at these, we find five basic components to a blessing. One is meaningful touch. In Genesis 48, Jacob is blessing his 12 sons and their children, and here he's blessing Joseph's uh, two sons. They are the sons God has given to me here, Joseph said to his father. Then Israel said, Israel the same as Jacob, bring them to me so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age, and he could hardly see. So Joseph brought his sons close to him, and his father kissed them and embraced them. He embraced them and hugged them and kissed them. In uh, Mark's gospel, the the 10th chapter, people were bringing children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. And the disciples saw it and they say, keep your children away. Jesus doesn't have time for children. And when Jesus saw that, he was indignant. He said, let the children come to me. And so the children came and he took them in his arms and he blessed them. Meaningful touch is always part of the blessing. Touch is an essential part of being a caring, firming father. Mark tells us in his first chapter that a leper approached Jesus And whenever a leper would come, people would scatter so that they wouldn't be anywhere near catching this dreaded disease. But Jesus walked right toward him. He not only healed him, but he touched him. Jesus knew the human longing for touch. Social scientist Virginia Satir says it takes four hugs for survival. It takes eight hugs a day for maintenance. It takes 12 hugs a day for growth. Do you give 12 hugs a day? Do you give 12 hugs a week? Fathers, don't ever stop hugging your kids. Second component to the blessing is spoken words. Uh, The blessing always involves spoken words. In Genesis 49, uh, Jacob is blessing his 12 sons, and he says to Judah, Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. He blessed him with words. In Deuteronomy 33, 1, Moses gives a blessing to, before he dies, to all the Israelites. And then the whole chapter is just words of blessing. No matter what age your children may be, it's not too late to offer them words of blessing. Robert's father was an alcoholic. He was known as the town drunk. Robert was a star football player on the football team. Uh, He was all league, went on to play in college. He was named an All-American, then went on to a pro career. But it always bothered him. He had a void inside because his father didn't ever come to his games. Well, it turns out his father actually did come to his games, but he would sit in the back and he would leave early. He was embarrassed about his drinking problem, that he was an alcoholic. Well, after his football career uh, ended, uh, he went to seminary and became a pastor. And uh, one day he got a call from the hospital. They said, your father's very sick. Come quickly. So he rushed over to the hospital, and his dad was going in and out of consciousness. And his dad got confused. He thought that Robert was the doctor, and so he was telling the doctor, my son is a great football player. He was an All-American a uh, real star, and, and now he's an excellent pastor at a fine church. And Robert began to weep. It was like a healing bomb was being poured over him. He heard words that day he'd waited to hear for 35 years. The blessing is like a piece of the puzzle. We think, they know I love them. They know I'm proud of them. No, a blessing is not a blessing unless it's spoken. They can't read your mind. There's a reason some people feel confident. It has a lot to do with receiving the blessing from their father. Maybe you're a father who only has your children part-time. Well, use that time well. To show your kids your approval. If a young woman doesn't get affirmation from her father, she will try to find it elsewhere. 
because she has not received the blessing from the most important male in her life, her father. If your daughter doesn't get approval from you, she may go from relationship to relationship, not valuing herself because she did not feel valued by her father. Fathers, treat your daughters like princesses. You're teaching her what love is. You're teaching her how other men should treat her. Drea, uh, Cam, and Jamie all went on their first date, not with another guy, but with me. We went out to dinner or lunch. I opened the car door for them. I held their hand. So now other guys have a very high bar to reach. Not only do, do they have to look handsome like me, <laughs> they have to bring, bring their A game. The third component of the blessing is expression of high value. In Genesis 49, Jacob is blessing his 12 sons, and he comes to Joseph, and he says, 22, Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a spring whose branches climb over a wall. With bitterness, archers attacked him. They shot at him with hostility. But his bow remained steady. His ar strong arms stayed limber. He's saying Joseph was, was sold by his brothers into uh, slavery in Egypt. He could have just given up and just been angry. But instead, his arms were limber. He, 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 di he didn't give up. Because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob. Because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel. Because of the fa your Father's God who helps you, because of the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of the skies above, blessings of the deep springs below, blessings of the breast and womb, your Father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, than the bounty of age-old hills. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph and on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Jacob was saying to Joseph, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you that you did not slip into depression and bitterness when you got sold into Egypt. Instead, you, you, didn't, you didn't get angry with God and give up on God. You kept believing in him that he had a plan for your life and God was gonna bring good out of this. A boy grew up in the hill country in Tennessee in the late 1800s. Back in those days, when somebody was born to an unwed mother, people would look down on him and... Uh, other mothers would not let their children play with this boy. And he'd hear all the time people say, Who, who's your father? He'd go to a store with his mom and people would be there and he could hear their whispers loud enough for everybody in the store to hear. There he is again. Who's his father? Well, this made him feel insecure. At age 12, a new minister came into town and he was charismatic and uh, created quite a stir, and so he, he went one day to see what the buzz was all about. He sat in the back. His plan was to leave early, but he got all caught up in the pastor's message, and afterwards he got wedged in between people, and he came out and saw the pastor, and the pastor said, who's your father? It got real quiet. It was the question everybody wanted to hear the answer to. The boy hung his head. Almost immediately, the pastor realized what was going on. He says, I know who your father is. There's a great resemblance. I know whose child you are. You are a child of Almighty God. Well, over 30 years later, that boy was elected governor of Tennessee starting in 1911 for two terms. And he would say, the day I got elected was the day that pastor told me who my father was. You may have grown up without a father. Maybe you feel a void. I believe that void is being filled. You are a child of Almighty God. Right now, your Father in Heaven is filling that void. I realize not everyone got the blessing. Many children today are being raised without a father in the home. You may not have had a father when you were growing up. Don't use that as an excuse. God says, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. 
He says, he will be your father. He will watch out for you in a special way. He will get you where you need to go. Many mothers are raising children alone. You're doing an amazing job. God says, he will be your husband. He will help you raise your kids. Parents, you can help your children understand their high value by helping them realize they are created in the image of God. Every person who walks on this earth is created in God's image. That means they are infinitely valuable. The psalmist says, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels, crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. You can help them know they're created in God's image. You can also help them know they're infinitely valuable because Christ died for them. Christ died for you because you are worth it. This is your legacy. This is what you're passing down. More than your money, more than your success. This is what's going to live on. Let your kids know that they are infinitely valuable because they're made in the image of God and they're so worth it that Jesus died for them. The fourth component of the blessing is a picture of a special future. In Genesis 27, Jacob or Isaac is blessing Jacob. So he went to him, Jacob went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you, peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers. May the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. Isaac pictured a bright future for him. In Genesis 48, uh, Jacob is uh, blessing Joseph's sons. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, walk faithfully, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. Joseph had two sons. May they be called by my name and the names of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and may they increase greatly. On the earth. He pictures these two boys upholding the family name by following God closely and having many children. Probably the most famous blessing in the Bible is offered by Moses to the people of Israel before he died. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face towards you. And give you his peace. You could speak those words of blessing to your children. Samuel was asked by God to go to the house of Jesse and bless one of his sons to be the new king of Israel. Well, Jesse had his sons all in there ready to see Samuel, but he had David outside attending the sheep. He thought he's too scrawny. He's inexperienced, can't be him. My other sons all are in the military. They wear the uniform. It's going to be one of them. And so Samuel came in, and the first one he saw was Eliab, the oldest son, and God said to him, no, not him. Then he looked at the second son, and no, third, fourth, I think there were eight sons. Samuel says, none of these. Do you have any more sons? Well, I got one. He's out tending the sheep. I know it can't be him. Well, send for him immediately. So he sent a messenger, and David saw the messenger running toward him, wondered what was wrong. He said, your father wants to see you right away. So they ran back to the house. And the minute David walked in, God said to Samuel, that's the one. And Samuel exclaimed, this is the new king of Israel. And he anointed him. Jesse had a king in his house, but he didn't recognize it. All he looked, on, looked at was at the outside. He didn't see the inside, the giant killer, the army general, the skilled harpist. Don't be like Jesse, 
and have a king or queen in your house but not recognize it. The final component to the blessing is an active commitment to help. A father blesses his children not only when he shows his children affection, tells them how amazing they are and shares with them the bright future he sees for them, but also about making an active commitment to help them reach their full potential. James writes, suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? He says, what good is it to see a person in need but not do anything? Father, if you see your son or daughter in need of something and need some help, you give that active commitment to help. When Mark, our son, was five, he came home from kindergarten one day and says, I'm dumb. I'm the only child in our class who can't read. Well, Jory and I knew that he was smart, so we started that very night and worked with him over the next month to make sure he could read. Help your kids change what can be changed. If there's a problem with acne, doctors say there's no reason for a kid to be struggling with acne today. There are treatments, there are medicines. If your, te- if your child has crooked teeth, do everything within your financial capability to fix those teeth. Rick Barry was a superstar for the Golden State Warriors. He was a confident man, but during his growing up years, he was embarrassed and humiliated by his teeth. His permanent teeth came in crooked and two were missing. And so he would never smile. And he got a habit of putting his hand over his mouth. All through middle school and high school, he was just terribly embarrassed for some reason, his parents never had them fixed. And then finally, they were, they were fixed in college. If your kid's struggling with academics, help them or find a tutor. Gary Smalley, in his book, The Blessing, says he struggled with math all through grade school and middle school and all the way up to his senior year in high school. During his senior year, when he was repeating geometry, He just knew he was going to flunk. The reason he knew is because the teacher told him every day, you're going to flunk. His only solace was that half the class was flunking with him. The reason he knew is because the teacher seated people by their grade, so all the Fs were sitting in the back. Well, one day, the kids struggled into geometry, and there was a substitute teacher. Well, that was relief enough. When the teacher announced that their former teacher had been reassigned to another district, they felt like the people in Paris being liberated by the Americans in World War II. (sighs) But then Gary thought, well, uh, it's nice to have a new teacher. Maybe that's a little help, but I'm still getting an F. I'm still not very smart in math. Then the teacher said something that changed everything. He said, I want to help every one of you to pass geometry. If any of you fails, I have failed you. If that means staying after class to tutor you, if that means coming in on weekends, I will do that. I want to help every one of you to enjoy geometry and learn to to, to, uh, work with it. Well, that just changed everything for those kids. And Gary came in every Saturday with a bunch of other kids and they got tutored by the teacher and afterwards he played volleyball with them. I mean, it just changed everything for the kids. They they came to class enjoying it. They looked forward to coming. But it was nothing like the final day of class when he posted the grades. Every kid passed. And Gary got his first A in his entire life in mathematics. In fact, it so changed his life, he minored in mathematics in college. All because a teacher made an active commitment to help. Fathers, we give our children blessing when we do whatever we can to help them succeed. 
when Pearl Harbor was bombed in 1941, lots of young people signed up for the military. One young soldier who was being shipped out and knew it was a very dangerous mission and might not return wrote this letter to his parents. Dear folks, I have left this with instructions to send it on to you if anything happens to me. I send you my love and blessings. My life has been a full one. I have been loved like very few persons ever. I love you with all the best that is in me. It hasn't been hard for me knowing you believe in me, trust me, and stand behind me in fair or foul. Knowing this has made me strong. Would your children be able to write that about you? Fathers, make sure your children get your, get your blessing. It's never too late. Tell them how proud you are of them, how valuable they are to you, and how valuable they are to God. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for all these blessings we see scattered through the Bible. We see how important it is. And I pray for everyone here that we'd become people of blessing rather than people that criticize and tear down and discourage people. We're people who build people up. And particularly, I pray for fathers that they might give blessing to their children. I want to give you a chance to respond to God. Maybe you're here, you're here as a father and you feel convicted. Tell God what you want to do as a result of hearing what he said from his word today. Or you're anybody else and you say, you know what? I want to bless people. I want to make that my practice from now on. Tell God that. Or if you feel like you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, invite him into your life. And say, I want you to be my Lord. Thank you for dying for me. I feel so valuable because of that. You pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you that it's never too late to make a change. Never too late for a father to give blessing to his children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.